Philippine Yellow Corn, a commodity system analysis anchored in the agribusiness framework. Corn, or zimis in its scientific name, was acknowledged as the most important crop in the Philippines next to rice due to its economic, health, and industrial uses. It originated from the southern portion of North America and was first adapted and produced by the native people of Mexico, later on introduced in the Philippines through the galleon trade. Comparing the volume of production to the United States with 346 million metric tons, China with 257 million metric tons, and Brazil with 101 million metric tons, the Philippines is a minor player with just 6 million metric tons. But how significant is yellow corn that the country is aiming for its self-sufficiency? Yellow corn has global importance as it is used as a major component of livestock and poultry feed and biofuel ethanol. In the Philippines, about 70% of the total yellow corn production is being used as an ingredient for feed production, which constitutes about 50% of the total formulated animal feed rations. By 2050, meat consumption will increase up to 73% according to FAO due to the projected population of 9.8 billion by that year. This calls for a steady increase in feed consumption, which has a direct relationship to the demand for yellow corn. Hence, the yellow corn is needed for supplying the demand, for, foods, for food security, and for providing job opportunities, which in the Philippines accounts for 600,000 jobs on businesses and farms related to corn. As yellow corn established its importance on a global scale, and more importantly, in the Philippines, distinguishing the latest trends, prevailing problems, and leaving opportunities for all participants in its vertical structure became significant. The major inputs of yellow corn production are the seeds, fertilizers, and good irrigation that are most commonly utilized by the farmers. Other inputs included in yellow corn production are pesticides and agricultural farm labor. The input sector is challenged by the high cost of input materials. In fact, from 39,746 pesos in 2017, the average cost of inputs increased to 44,213 pesos in 2019, with prices of seeds and fertilizers as the major implications of the change. For instance, the price of GM seeds per bag is 6,000 pesos, which is very high according to the Department of Agriculture. Farmers also lack access to formal credit, which leads them to use recycled seeds that poses a negative impact on the yields of yellow corn. According to Philippine Statistics Authority, the average land holding of corn is 1.14 hectares. The denial status of yellow corn is 36.11% fully owned, 25% tenanted, 16.27% owner-like possession, and 14% rent-free. There is an unpredictable trend in area harvested, volume of production, and yield per hectare as there was an evident decrease between 2014 to 2016 from 4.17 to 3.97 metric ton per hectare, but the yield goes up to 4.20 metric ton per hectare in 2017 when the country achieved 103% self-sufficiency in yellow corn. With Cagayan Valley, Soxargen, and Northern Mindanao as a country's top producer region. As of 2019, the Philippines has an average yield of 4.14 metric tons per hectare of yellow corn, but can reach up to 12 metric tons. The Philippines is situated in the Typhoon Belt and is visited by an average of 20 typhoons per year, which affects the production of yellow corn. Due to these numerous typhoons, this resulted in soil erosion affecting the soil fertility, decreasing corn yield. According to the computations of the Department of Agriculture, last 2018, the typhoons Henry, Indai, Hossi, Ompong dropped the total corn production by 14.83%. And recently, in 2020, 68.92 million were lost, was lost from the typhoon Nolly. Another reason for the decrease in yield is the pests and weeds. The Asian corn borer is the number one enemy of the farmers in the Philippines. To improve the yield, UC Abiti corn is efficient. It is resistant to pests such as Asian corn borer that help the farmers to have higher yields and have less cost for pesticides. The introduction of Abiti corn last 2003 posted a positive effect on the farm income 
of 470 million US dollars from 2003 to 2013. Moreover, this is how cultural practices of yellow corn are done, which starts from land preparation and ends with story. There are many products that can be derived from yellow corn, but its main usage is for livestock feed, ethanol and fuel production, and human consumption. Luzon can be considered the Philippine center of commercial feed mill, making up about 71.14% of the registered feed mills in the country. For ethanol and fuel production, yellow corn yields substantially less when compared to sugar cane and cassava. According to PSA, the pattern of the export volume value and unit price of yellow corn in the country is unpredictable. From 2015 to 2019, the export data fluctuated. The highest volume recorded was during 2017 with 595 metric tons, with its lowest volume being recorded in 2018 with only 333.8 metric tons. The same can be said with the trend of the import volume value and unit price of yellow corn. The values are unsteady and fluctuated from often 20, from 2015 to 2019. A significant problem in the processing sector is the lack of efficient storage and facilities to store supplies and reach quality of the local produce. This is because high capital investments on yellow corn production are required to establish the required facilities to meet the demand. This somewhat alleviated with the government's initiative to provide affordable loans and financial support to farmers, which stimulates growth, production, and processing of yellow corn. Each province has adopted its own marketing channels for the produce, meaning there is no single established marketing channel for it and that the number of intermediaries vary from province to province. Sabella, being one of the top producers of yellow corn in the country, has the most complex marketing channel. The market channel of Cebu has, is, much, is much simpler. The National Food Authority takes on the important role of marketing yellow corn, stabilizing market prices by buying directly from farmers at a much higher price than normal before selling it to consumers at a much lower price. However, the traders still have the upper hand when it comes to controlling the price. In order to support the farmers in marketing their produce and lessening marketing layers so their income may increase, the Philippine Association of Feed Millers Incorporated or PAFME pledged to buy from local farmers securing contracts growing with them. Prices of yellow corn are dependent on the supply and demand of the market across the world. The huge factors affecting the prices in demand of yellow corn are mostly ethanol and fuel demand and crude oil prices. The factors that affect the demand and supply of yellow corn in the country are the decrease in harvest area, the farm gate prices, and the weather climate conditions. From 2001 to 2012, the local production was increasing, but not as steady as increase in local demand. Although the local demand of 5.2 million metric ton in 2012 was able to meet. Furthermore, in 2014, there has been a deficient of 362,286 metric tons due to the unmet yellow corn requirement. In 2019, PAFB projected that they will need an estimate of 10 million metric ton, but the local corn production is estimated to only be 8 million metric ton, resulting in a 2 million metric ton gap. The high cost of transportation is a result of poor road condition, limited supply of transport services, and high fuel costs. Limited marketing information, market outlets, and low and unstable prices of produce by unstable market condition are also one of the struggles of corn farmers. The E-traders for corn can still be an opportunity for a wider marketing of the commodity in the country. This will eliminate the farm-to-market rule problems through updating its features. Additionally, the buyback scheme of Agusan del Sur can also be implemented in the other areas of yellow corn production in the country to stabilize the prices and give an assured equitable income to corn farmers. Support sectors play a very critical role in assisting each sector, 
from the input up to the marketing of the commodity to it to reach its highest potential and attain the most efficient and effective value chain to all of its stakeholders. The institution that supports the yellow corn production in the country are categorized as to the role they are playing in the commodity framework. For research, insurance and credit, for farm machineries and post harvest facilities, and, and for stabilizing for yellow corn prices and law implementation. Meanwhile, the 2017 to 2022 public investment programs released by the NEDA or the National Economic Development and Authority revealed that corn particular particularly yellow corn is still a priority crop in the country with almost 29 billion pesos allocated budget for crop insurance, 23 billion pesos allocated budget for, for the national corn program, 4 billion pesos for nationwide data, database for farmers, half a billion pesos for extension services. This will open a lot of opportunities for the support sector to address the concern in the yellow corn chain. In every part of the framework, there are strengths to maintain, weaknesses to develop, opportunities to maximize, and threats to overcome. The following are the information obtained after performing the SWOT analysis in every sector. For input sector, the strengths are availability of input materials such as seeds, tools, fertilizers, and other agrochemicals in the local market, active government intervention, and strong support from various associations. Weaknesses, on the other hand, are the high cost of input materials, especially GM corn seeds, limited information about the latest government extension services, and minimal support in research and development of corn. Opportunities to, to be maximized are the introduction of different yellow corn seeds, improved linkages among government agencies and private sector, the bill seeking the establishment of the Philippine Corn Research Institute, or the Philcorn, the threats to overcome are the manipulation of GM yellow corn seeds by traders and multinationals, GM seeds being counterfeited, and the average age of yellow corn farmers. For farm sector, the strengths are the wide area of yellow corn production, availability of hybrid seeds and different variety of seeds for high quality yellow corn production, and large population of experienced farmers of yellow corn in the country. Weaknesses on the other hand, are the climate change or unfavorable climatic conditions in the country, yellow corn is prone to, it, prone to insect, pest, and disease problems. Yellow corn is susceptible to weeds. Opportunities, on the other hand, are the application of advanced technologies in the farm sector, installation of efficient technology machineries, and facilities for post-harvest for, for post handling to reduce losses, and building and maintaining infrastructures and facilities. For the threats, the uncontrollable pests and diseases, the decrease in area of production and crop failure due to climatic conditions are the threats for this sector. For the processing sector, the strong presence of feed millers and constant support from different associations are the strengths. For the weaknesses, the loss of vitamins and minerals during the processing of yellow corn and poisonous characteristics to warm-blooded animals and the lack of technologies and knowledge in processing management on yellow corn. For the opportunities, many an increasing number of end process products can be derived from the yellow corn and the increasing number of feed mills in the country. For the threats, the availability of, the availability of yellow corn substitute, inferior amount of ethanol compared to the other commodity, large demand and supply gap, moisture content above the maximum standard of the processors. For the marketing sector, the presence, of the presence of traders in consolidating the produce of smallholder farmers is the strength, while for the weaknesses, the marketing channel of yellow corn is focused on, the, on meeting the local demand due to the insufficiency of production. Yellow corn is mostly consumed or utilized locally and exporting is almost non-existent. And lastly, many layers in the chain. For opportunities, the increased demand for animal foods National Corn Program of 2016 has conducted the introduction of a web-based trading system or e-trade in, in 2009 for buying and selling corn online. And the Philippine Association of Feed Millers and Corporation pledged to buy from the local farmers. For the threats to overcome, the projected demand and gap in the yellow corn are the low farm gate prices, ASF, ASF and COVID-19, limited marketing information and market outlets, 
feed millers prefer buying and using imported corn rather than our locally produced are also threats for this sector. And lastly, for the support services sector, the strengths are laws and policy for farmers, existing institutions that support yellow corn production, training seminars and workshops for farmers production. Well, for the weaknesses, the lack of monitoring and implementation of policy and laws, the absence of coordination among stakeholders. For the opportunities, there are, there are ongoing researches regarding corn cobs as alternative source of potassium for fertilizer, and there are investment priorities released by NEDA last 2018 with a timeline of until 2022, which covers a lot of concerns in the commodities such as post-harvest facilities, logistics, GM seeds, systematic database, programs, crop insurance, and extension services transactions. From the data gathered, the Philippines is not self-sufficient on yellow corn despite being surrounded with favorable global and local trends, and the massive support from the government and private institutions to help increase yellow corn's value in our market. These are the various reasons why self-sufficiency in yellow corn in our country is not paid. First is the lack of available alternatives to unexpected weather conditions. Second is the agriculture extension services done behind. Third is that the big companies in the country prefer imports. Fourth is that the government failed to provide timely demand and supply data. Fifth is the lack of strategically targeted government support and incentives. Sixth is the absence of support price for inputs and outputs. Seventh is the unsystematic mar marketing of yellow corn. Lastly is there is a decrease in labor force. Now that we're in the digital age, it should be strengthened to help our farmers sell their produce this year to lessen the layers in the marketing chain. The group suggests adopting Rain Discovery, an Ontario-based agriculture startup that first facilitated the corn trade directly from farmer to buyer through blockchain system. It is an online marketplace that uses blockchain, blockchain technology to create efficient, transparent, and secure transactions. The company uses not just blockchain technology, but also the elements of traceability, connectivity, coverage, instantaneous, and market intelligence, which could be adopted by the E-Trade for Corn of the Philippines. It has also features of live market, smart invoices, market viability, save time and money, analytics, and software integration. The group also promotes Project Sarai, a precision agriculture technology created by UPLB together with the 11 state university and colleges, and six national government agencies. It uses technologies such as remote sensing images to monitor the health of the crop and monitor the weather conditions by region to determine the planting dates of the farmers. The project is focused on nine crops, including the yellow corn. This will reduce the climate risk that the yellow corn farmers have been experiencing with unexpected weather conditions. Lastly, the Philippine yellow corn may follow the maize value chain of Mexico. The chain is accompanied with precise details and flow is very clear as to where to go, what to do, and who is involved in every area. With the collaborative efforts of all the stakeholders of the Philippine yellow core industry, it is not impossible to attain self-sufficiency in the commodity. Thank you for listening.